Thank you very much, Mike Rothen from Maidstone in the old dart. Let's check it out. I like what's in here because it's obsolete, apparently. Hmm. Let's, <laughs> I don't know what is obsolete, but something is. Oh, it's been x-rayed. Oh. All right. wonder if that was x-rayed by, uh, by the Poms or locally. I don't think we, we give a toss. Oh, there's a note. Oh, wow. oh no! 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 Tore the box! Personal computer design tool. Hands up if you had one of these. Design in Taiwan, 87. <laughs> the good design. The good product design award. <laughs> it won a good product design award. Fantastic. It's obviously some sort of um, logic trainer. It, it hooks up to a PC, so I wonder if it like um, like hooks up to the AT, XT AT bus or whatever. Oh, fantastic! Oh yeah! Oh not yet. No, it's got its own. Yeah, it's got its own dedicated interface board. Oh sweet as! Check it out. It's just basically I/O. Like there's nothing else, nothing else doing on there. It's uh. It's just doing some address to code. Yeah, it doesn't even have any uh, gals or pals. It's just uh, gals and pals. Look, look at the yellow in on the bottom breadboard there. The bromine um, leached out of the plastic. It was for like designing and developing PC cards, I guess. Because why else would you, you know, want to access the address and data bus on a PC bus? Wow. Never seen this before. And a Logic Probe interface. Oh, we don't have the Logic Probe. Aww. But anyway, um, it's an interesting bit of kit. Thank you very much, Mike. Let's check it out. There's the interface board for it. As I said, like there's no gals or pals or anything. Look at this, 7407. Fantastic, thank you very much. Some uh, 244s for latching out the data and uh, driving it. And that's about all she wrote. You don't really need much to interface with the uh, ISA bus. It's all just... Yeah, just latches and buffers and stuff. I do find it interesting how they've mixed and matched their uh, 244s. They just like couldn't get them all from the same batch. <clears throat> Neat. Wow, this is really something. The ATEC AT601 design tool for personal computer use. Thank you very much. It's actually got uh, PC bus input and output so that you could, uh, you know, breadboard stuff and breadboard your circuit in line and then uh, feed it back out and stuff so it's uh, got a mains uh, power supply on it flight house southampton hmm and a switching uh, basically the internal power looks like it's only for its own dedicated switching power supply which gives you plus minus five plus minus twelve doesn't tell you anything about uh, power and it just gives you multiple connectors for that logic probe unfortunately mike uh, lost the logic probe but it's just a digital logic probe and then you can get access to all the interrupt pins all the um knowledge pins the oscillator data bus address bus power bus fantastic and output sync alt chop I don't really know what that is. Designed to hook up to a scope or something? Hmm, strange. So my guess inside this is that we're just going to have a couple of uh, buffers on the input because I doubt that we're uh, the 244s on the card over there are going to drive the ribbon cable and just like come out directly, like break out directly to this. They've probably got some more uh, buffering there would be my guess. Um, and the switching power supply. Let's crack it open. Made in Taiwan. All of this stuff was made in Taiwan back in the 90s. <laughs> Let's, oh, look at this. Like Bakelite. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, got some extra buffers, called it. And it looks like it's just got, like, it's just like repurposed a, uh, a switch in uh, power supply. I'm sure they wouldn't have uh, done that themselves. They, like, well, they definitely didn't. It's uh, TPI Electronics uh, Co. They, you know, but that could have just been a switch in power supply at the time. Look at that. The resistor on top of the diode. It's pretty how you're doing. Oh, the snot is, uh, oh, the hot snot is uh, a bit worse for wear. Hmm. Anyway, that's not the world's best. <laughs> Just stop them flapping around in the breeze there. It's not the world's greatest power supply, is it? It's all a bit how you're doing, but uh, there we go. They're just like bussing those between the um, it was some hot spots not to hold the screws down. And once again, some uh, 244s on there just to uh, buffer everything. And a gold star. 
Oh, I haven't seen a Gold Star chip for a long time. Anyone remember Gold Star? Yes, they, that's the consumer electronics company, Gold Star. They did actually um, make their own chips back in the day. Anyways, just 74LSR 153 from 19. Jesus, soldering's pretty how you do it, isn't it? Wow, unbelievable. And what's that rattling noise? Oh, there we go. It's a screw. Yeah. But yeah, like there's not much in it. It just basically just goes up to the uh, sockets and then like they just didn't engineer that <laughs> well, did they? Some poor bastard had to solder all that in by hand and getting that stranded wire through each individual holes. If you could do all that and not have a little daggy uh, short go over to the next one, you were having a good day. Trust me, that's terrible, Muriel. So thank you very much, Mike, for that two minute teardown. Wow, like I didn't know, I don't think I've ever seen something like this with uh, the breadboards like this. You've got four of them, that's uh, standard size breadboards. That's, you know, fairly decent to uh, uh, prototype your circuits and stuff that hook up to the ISA bus. Of course, it was only the eight bit ISA bus. You want to do the 16 bit? I don't know, maybe they had another model for that, but yeah, hands up if you use one of these or you develop stuff for the ISA bus back in the day. Thanks, Mike. Yes, it's the Gigatron again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bio security screened. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> fantastic. Um, yes, they clued me up that they were sending me some extra stuff, which is fantastic. And I'll show you in a minute the four layer board that now works. Spoiler alert. Sorry. <laughs> but apparently, we have a uh, keyboard. I'll read the note. <laughs> it's a long note. Um, it's a pluggy Mc. Pluggy McPlug face, um, an adapter that lets you hook up a retro PS2 keyboard. Still got one of those, I think. It translates uh, uh, into ASCII code, which the Gigatron can read. Fantastic, because the Gigatron's only got like the PC, uh, uh, sorry, the controller input. And they sent me a new ROM as well, which has the um, a WAS monitor, the original Apple One. So it, uh, it simulates and emulates an Apple One and has a basic uh, interpreter. Fantastic. Let's power it up. Let's check out Pluggy McPlugface. Oh, got to solder it. Oh, the irony of a TTL microcomputer needing one of these newfangled micros to do the serial conversion. Unbelievable. And I thought they had uh, goofed this up for a second um, <laughs> because it just doesn't fit in there. But if you turn it over, no, the instructions are there. Mount U1 to the other side first and they've conveniently cut away some of the socket there so we can whack it in. Someone was thinking. So yes, this is the four layer DaveCAD version which you've seen in previous videos, and yes, it does work. So we've got ourselves the new version three ROM. Let's stoke it up. First world nerd problems. Check it out, we've got some extra options. Beautiful. Look at this, Wasmon, basic, tic-tac-toe, bricks, and Tetronus. No idea what that is. Anyway, our keyboard works. And of course you've seen the uh, pictures and stuff before. Tic-tac-toe, the Wasmon. Enter, enter, Bueller, spacebar, no. How do we enter the Wasmon? Uh, uh, do I have to read the instructions? Hmm, yep. Home or end. There you go. Tiny basic version two. Oh, whopping 5,900 bytes free and four bytes free. You can do a lot in the extra four. Check it out. If I press the page down key, haven't read the instructions yet, just dicking around. Um, it gives us the extra resolution, like a horrible resolution. It's stealing more cycles away from the video. Or oh, it can have nice solid. Oh, sweet as. CLS. <laughs> you ever seen a clear screen that slow? Oh, there's our OK. I was waiting for our OK to come up. Supports uppercase. Oh, fancy pantsy stuff. Let's list our program. Let's run our program. Hello world. Fantastic. Doesn't the Wasmon supposed to have a flashing uh, at cursor here? Anyway, um, let's see if we can uh, explore some memory contents. Oh. Oh, we can go backspace. Oh, there we go. Yes, we can see the memory. Beautiful. 
Let's go all the way with LBJ, shall we? Ah, we're dumping the lot. Beautiful. And of course, if we press page down, it'll go quicker. And whoa, it's flying. Oh, we can't do the last command. 00.ff. Wow. But of course, if we uh, aren't stealing as many cycles for the video, it just takes a lot longer. Sweet as. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Robert. What has Robert sent? Let's have a look. Vintage Tech, Tektronix Square Museum. Oh, cool. A museum of vintage tech. We've got some sort of generator board. Oh, yes. I won't show you what it's going to generate, but you can probably guess. Fantastic. What we're going to do, it's a programmed micro that generates XY data, which goes into our scope. Oh, let's have a look. And, of course, I've got to use, can you see it? Tektronix 2225. Let's do it on that. Beauty. It's the Tektronix Wizard. Woohoo! Check it out. And the old Tektronix logo. Bring it back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Fantastic. Bit of flicker on there. That's not the camera. That's actually just the uh, rate that they're doing this at. But that's pretty smooth. Look at that. It's great. Anyway, if you don't know, the Tektronix Wizard uh, used to appear back in, uh, you know, schematics and uh, manuals and stuff back in the day. Neat. And of course, we can uh, move that on the screen like that. <laughs> Fantastic. Looks best on an analog uh, scope, of course. And of course, if you change the uh, volts per division, you can see that the individual uh, dots made up in there. Well, not dots, the individual, because this is a vector-based uh, thing. It's an XY vector thing. But you can see the individual uh, segments in there and the limitations of the uh, DAC, which they're using on this thing, which there it is down here. Whoop. So we've got an uh, Atmel something or other, and uh, it's a shame they just used normal pads here for 5 volts. Would have liked to have seen like a uh, banana plug, one of those little uh, PCB mount uh, banana uh, jacks. That, that would have been nice, so that you can just, you know, plug straight in. Anyway, or maybe even extend the board out and have like a 9 volt battery clip and a uh, little 5 volt uh, regulator on there. That would have been nice. Anyway, we've just got X and Y uh, output. We've got uh, resistor arrays here, which of course uh, they're just using a resistor DAC there to generate. Uh, that's why they've got, you know, seven or eight bits or whatever it is uh, resolution on the thing. And uh, the L and W ones are wizard and uh, logo. That's what they stand for. So instead of alternating between them, you can just uh, uh, choose whichever one you want. That would have been nice if there was just a switch on there. So thank you very much, Bob Hass from the Vintage Tech Museum. And they actually sell this on their eBay store. They've sold hundreds of them, which is not surprising. I'll link it in down below if you want one. Check it out. And if we change the shutter speed 10,000 times a second, 6,000, 4,000, we can see some of the refresh happening there. Neat. 2,000, 1,500, 1,000. And we'll get to the point. I was shooting at uh, 60 before. So 350, 250, 180, 125, 100. And we're back down and we shouldn't get... Whoa, nothing worse than a wizard overexposing himself. Hi to all my viewers in Rochester, New York. Thank you very much, uh, Jason uh, Olszewski. For some reason that name's a bit familiar. I don't know. Anyway, it's not a mailbag without some of these. Let's check it out. It's, it is plural. There's an S on the end, so we don't just get one. No siree, Bob. Oh, oh, handwritten note on a bit of nice fibrous paper. I like that. Have we... I do FX21. For all you Casio fanboys like myself, FX21. I don't think I have the FX21. I've got a very similar form factor one. And we've got another. Oh. Oh, wow. What a Bobby Dazzler. Look at that. <laughs> ah, fantastic. A Casio landscape format. Uh, what model is time? Uh, it's got what well, you know the alarm it calculates like a bedside table 
kind of alarm calculator. This was, you know, all the rage in the 80s, the, you know, the Game & Watch and the, <laughs> you know, everything had a clock in it. Um, you know, they were trying to, like, integrate everything. That's fantastic. Unfortunately, the CQ1 is broken. Oh, what a bummer. But look at this beauty. Oh, just doesn't get any better than that, the CQ1. <laughs> <laughs> it's even got a stopwatch with lap counter. Fantastic. And alarm mode. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> There's a the little speaker output for the alarm. And, of course, it's just a four banger. Oh, not even a square root. Oh, love a good root. Single AA powered and a couple of uh, LR44s for the uh, memory back up there because, you know, you change the main battery, you still want your RTC to be running because you don't want to have to set your damn time again. Made in Japan. All the best stuff's made in Japan. Wow, you can actually use an AC adapter with it too <laughs> for bedside use. Let's open this baby up and see what 1970s goodness oh, we're going to have. Oh, a few springs. Oh, look at that. There we go. Is that going down to our uh, shield at the bottom? Whoa. Nope. <laughs> What's going <laughs> There we go. What? <laughs> okay. No, it's going up to the top. What on earth? Wow. It's not a real electronic product. It's got a spring in it. Oh, yeah. Look, it's it just didn't look like solid copper on the top. But, yeah, <laughs> got a copper shielding sheet down there. Beautiful. Oh, let's flip that out. Oh, look at that. Oh, our vacuum fluorescent display. Beautiful. NEC. Uh, 70, is that, yeah, 77 vintage. That sounds about right, given that the uh, they're telling you to uh, set the time, January 25th, 1977. Um, important date in the space-time continuum. Notice how they rolled their own board here for the uh, little inverter for the uh, the high voltage required for the vacuum fluorescent display. They didn't put that on the main board. They decided to uh, roll that as a separate one. Oops, <laughs> that capacitor was too high. Just bend it over. No wackers, that one there. Just bend it over. Common as mud back in the day. So single chip uh, calculator solution and obviously the uh, vacuum fluorescent driver down in there. Got a couple of trimmers there. Look at that. And a bent over. Oop, bent over package. All the electrons are going to fall out of that one. But yep, fascinating technology from the 1970s. I love it. How many hands up if you actually had one of these? And uh, like, these were probably all the rage back in the day, you know, so advanced, like to have a, like a calculator and alarm clock and a stopwatch, did everything. Everyone wanted one of these babies. Because the first thing you want to do in the morning when you wake up is you know, calculate something on your four banger. No worries. Awesome work. Thanks. Thank you very much, Kay Hardesty from Las Vegas, Nevada. Been to Las Vegas. It's not that great. Sorry. <laughs> Underwhelmed. <laughs> Sorry, it was just, you know, supposed to be cool. Anyway, just a little gift from your friends at Fort Meade, Maryland. Awesome. <laughs> Who would have guessed the NSA has a gift shop and museum? Oh, the NSA has a gift shop and a museum with working Enigma machine to try. Couldn't resist getting you a t-shirt to go with my tinfoil hat. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, this is going to be... Oh, that's a nice... Um, uh, one of those, um, that's not cotton, that's like a, a proper sweatshirt. Under Armour. Wow, it's an Under Armour brand. Awesome. <laughs> NSA, National Security Agency, Fort Meade. Excellent. And to go along with my NSA monitored microphone, I've now got the t-shirt. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Thank you very much, Zoz, Z-O-F-Z, -Z, um, for this, th well, it calls them prints, 3D like postcardy print things. I was expecting more 3D-ness out of it. Maybe it's showing it up on camera better, but that's cool. Anyway, Gerber Viewer Program. Fantastic. I'll link it in down below. Check it out.